Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody, to another Turn Mill Thursday. I know it's been a while since we've did this, and by popular request, we have brought this back so that each and every one of you can have a chance to go about learning more about Turn Mill. Now, keep in mind, I don't know how often I'm going to be able to get in here with the Mill Turn or the Turn Mills. Obviously, I would like to see more, depending on what Autodesk releases, nonetheless. But this week, we're going to go ahead and cover polar milling. And before I jump into that, I do have to give you guys the spiel is if my audio sounds terrible, I did make some adjustments and it looks like I'm a little high here. Let me turn this down for some of you. Uh, from that, you could go ahead and let me know in the chat at any time if you have questions or if my audio is terrible or if I'm messing something up, freeze or disappear for some reason. As for most of you that are returning all the time as the stats show, I am Fusion Phil over here at JetCAD Cam. If you guys have any questions about anything you see today, you're welcome to email me with the link down below or put your messages in chat or leave comments on this video. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So we're going to start off with the basics. What is polar milling? Now, there's a lot of controversy about this back and forth. There's polar interpol, polar coordinates. However, at the end of the day, polar milling is the idea of three axis machining, but one of those axes being a rotary axis. Now, commonly we see this in a mill turn or a turn mill environment. However, it's not limited to machines like fifth axis or even fourth axis machines, as we saw last week on our Fusion or our Free Support Friday video content when somebody needed to maneuver a very large part inside of a mill, not necessarily a lathe. In this case, we're actually going to look at polar milling here inside of Fusion. And a lot of today's video is going to be based on setting up our post processor to get it to do what we want to do. So, the first thing I'm going to do overall is I see you guys down there, live viewers out there. If my audio is okay, does it sound better than my last video? Hopefully, let me know in chat. I'm going to create a setup on this part. Yes, I already have a couple of setups on this part, but as you guys see, is I have to have examples for other videos as I go through. So, we're going to start off with the basics of a fixed size cylinder on this part. Again, we have our XYZ design. And with that, face milling tends to be the most common way to do polar milling. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two examples here. So we're going to jump straight in and I'm going to do two different 2D contours. Let me go ahead and grab a different tool here for this. One is going to be as if we were going to cut the faces here on just one section. And the other one is going to be is I'm going to go ahead and do a 2D contour all the way around this part. So what this allows me to do is let's get rid of that machine sim for now is we can go ahead and post this out. Now, depending on what post you're using and how you have everything set up, I'm gonna start with a Y axis post. And what we're gonna do is we are going to just generate our G code and see what we get. Now, this may come to a surprise. And again, like I said, is it really depends on your post processor. But in this case, with our machine travel and our limits, we're actually not using Polar at all for this first segment. And what we're doing is we're just doing it in a basic X, Y, three axis configuration. However, since we're going all the way around our part and having to swing that part, since we can't cross center line, we are now creating a polar G code automatically. So what you're seeing here is we have our XZC happening inside of Fusion 360. So now how can we actually set this up to force it one way or another? From a tool standpoint, for most of you out there, you're going to realize that being able to do polar sometimes or not all the time, you have that ability you can actually individually choose when you're going to do that, which is very nice. And how you do so is you have that ability to go in, and we're going to go ahead and post this once again. However, I'm going to hit the edit button next to this post processor. Now, up here at the top, you're going to notice you have two options. One is polar interpolation, and the other is polar coordinates. If you don't know the difference between the two, to simplify it, it's very similar to absolute versus incremental programming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab use polar coordinates, and I'm going to copy this. And from here, we're going to go back to Fusion. And I'm going to insert this using a NC, manual NC. And we're going to say action. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to post that in. And what you're going to see is by dragging this in front of the toolpath that I choose, I can now actually control, in this case, this original toolpath was X, Y, Z. And now because we're using that use polar coordinates, I'm going to be able to post this out. And you're going to notice, probably going to make me a liar, very common here, 
is we're going to get our actual configuration simply forced into XZC, right? So by using that manual NC action, I can actually pick and choose what I'm using and where I'm using it at, if it's acceptable based on what we're programming. Now, we can take this further. And I get these questions a lot is, what happens if we don't have a Y-axis on our machine? Is it going to automatically output it? In most cases, yes. But now there was some circumstances on how you can actually set up your machine and machine definition to also force this information. And I'm going to do that by going to my setup. We're going to go ahead and select our machine. And in this case, I'm going to create a machine for this specific use case. So let's go ahead and throw this in my cloud. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And now you need to decide, does your machine have a Y-axis and dual spindle, or is it a no Y-axis dual spindle? The Y-axis does make all the difference at the end of the day when setting up an automatically triggering polar interpolation. So what I'm going to say here is we're going to go ahead and pick that non-Y-axis machine. Again, if we look at our kinematics tree, there is no Y-axis here. We just have our X, Z, C. And in this case, because we have a subspindle, we actually have a second Z for that subspindle. Now, again, we can actually associate a post processor to what we have here. Again, I can go through and I can pick that Haas ST20Y post. Now, this is a Y post, but the machine definition should, in this case, as it did earlier, override that post processor. So what we're gonna do from here, again, we're gonna go ahead and select that machine. And with that machine selected, we're gonna go ahead and repost our G code. And I'm gonna cross my fingers and let's for once actually toggle a few things here so that I have to stop opening that file up every time we post it. But as you're seeing is even with that Y-axis post, there is some default settings we're gonna to have to change in that post processor. So as you can see, again, that first actual go around, we're getting X, Y, Z. We're not getting our X, C or X, Z, C. And then again, down below, we're now getting X, Z, C, right? So let's go ahead and make a couple of changes with that. So inside my post processor is I'm gonna actually post this out and I'm gonna edit this post processor. And the very first thing we have is up here at the top is this variable. Now your post may be different if you're looking at a JUSON or a FANUC post, but what you're really always gonna find is the terminology got Y axis is what we're chasing down, right? So we could start by changing got Y axis from true to false if I could spell false here. And we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then I'm gonna go back into Fusion and repost out what we're doing. So something as simple as changing, do you have a Y axis can automatically force that initial tool path to go into polar mode. And the same with our second tool path down below is already in polar mode, right? So nothing more than with being able to say, do you have a Y axis or do you not have a Y? Now, if we always want to force polar and have a Y axis, we can also set that as well inside of Fusion. So a neat trick I'm going to do is I am actually going to control Z to undo what we did right here so that we can return this post back to its default settings. Now, I'm going to go back over, and this time when I post process, what I'm actually going to do is I am going to not use machine configuration, and I'm going to use a different post. And what that post is going to be is inside of the Fusion library under the vendor Autodesk, nonetheless. And if some of you out there have seen my videos before, you all have noticed that there is what's called export CNC file to Visual Studio Code. Now, I believe I have this tucked away in here already. So let me go back and grab that. And there it is. And what this is going to do is it's going to dump a custom. G code file for what we're doing and allow us to make our C or our post processor edits automatically, right? So what you're seeing here is a blank file. That's okay. This is just telling you that it's posted out. We're going to now open up the Explorer. And if you do not have the Fusion plugin, I would highly recommend that you install this Fusion plugin so that you have access to all of these lovely tools down here. But under our CNC selector, what you're going to see is we have a custom. And then we have that 1001 G code. Now you do have to be on the post processor in order for this to work. And what that is going to do is that is going to populate our G code automatically that is from our part file, right? 
So as you can see here is if I was to go back and we were going to say we don't have a Y axis and we change this back to false and I hit save, you're going to notice it's automatically reposted this program. Again, this is a program out of Fusion. So I know the points. I know the way the G code should be coming out. Now, again, we could leave that as true because our end goal here would be is to leave our got, turret got Y axis on if you have a Y axis machine. The next thing you're going to want to look for is we're going to control F and we're going to look for force polar. Now, if your actual post processor doesn't support any of this and you guys don't want to go through the hassle of making these changes and edits, feel free to reach out to me directly so that I can assist you in pointing you in the right direction or making these changes for you. So what we could do is we can come down here. And in this case is if I go to force polar coordinates, we can change that to true. And I can go ahead and hit save. And again, same results have now been triggered inside of Fusion 360. So by able to force the polar coordinates, we have now forced this program with the Y axis. Every time we post something that is milling in our actual Y axis machine, it will always come out as polar coordinates. So again, as we could change that very simply back to false. And now we could actually start to have a little bit more fun with this. So if you guys wanted to dive a little deeper, we could actually go to our post properties here. And if you didn't know, you can go through here and you could actually toggle on your true falses up at the top. So for example, we have a G112 feature in this case, and we could actually turn that to true. Now, based on that toggle, we can regenerate our G code with those options toggled on. Again, we can actually physically change it in the post or we can temporarily turn it on. And what that allows us to do again is to go back and take a look at something and see if we can post out based on using G112. Now, in order to use G112, you will have to actually force polar interpolation. So let's go ahead and change this to true. And as you're going to see, it actually changed by G code. And what I'm seeing here is we have that G112 call out. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here real quick. So let's go back here, change it to true, and hit save. And what you see over here on the left is now we're using G12 right here in our G code. I don't want to click it this time because it jumps through my post because of my settings. But that way you have that G112 or G12.1, depending on your machine. Again, what's happening is we're now doing XYZ, but then we're inter interpretation. I can't say this word to save me. I just ate two big old burritos for lunch and I'm just thinking nap time. But as you can see, we could go in and plot this in X, Y points and then be able to spin the machine and use the machine controller to configure our tilting of our points. So as you can see, it's not a big brutal thing to be able to go in and make these changes. Again, you can do this from multiple different ways from changing your default post, as well as being able to modify that post or if you just needed something like this occasionally, a lot of the mill turns already support. They use polar coordinates and being able to toggle that on with nothing more than an action inside of the NC callout. And again, keep in mind with your post processor or how your machine reacts is sometimes you can force this all the time. In this case, on the Haas machine, it's allowing us only to force it when we need to actually spin that C axis. So as you can see here, again, using that small segment versus going 360 degrees, there is a limit where it is going to transition from one to the other. Or as you saw me do in the poor post, I can always force the polar coordinate system. So guys, that kind of concludes what we have going on this week. If you have any questions, by all means, leave a comment down below. We try to get back to you as quick as possible. You could also send us a email directly using the links below as well. And as you guys can see, we're releasing more and more content all the time from every Wednesday and Friday. And now with these turn mill classes coming back, you guys, or should I say mill turn? I always get that backwards. You guys at any time have any suggestions for a video or any problems that you're having, feel free to reach out to us. We always say it's not what you know, it's who you know. And when you're in a bind, you all know me over here at CAD Cam, and we're always happy to help. So with that, have a great rest of your day.